if you selected the USB drive. Hello guys and welcome to the channel. Today in this video we'll try to revive a very old netbook. This one I have got back in 2009. This is such a long time ago. It is 16 years old. So today we're going to find out whether it is still possible to revive such an old netbook. This ancient piece of hardware used to be pretty good and helpful but nowadays it's just not able to do much work at all. So I decided to make this video to see if it's actually gonna be able to run on MX Linux, which is a very lightweight Linux distro that is still supporting 32-bit operating systems and it's also releasing updates. So let's go ahead and find it out. But before we start, if you're first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. Also, if you like this video and would like to support my channel, please support with a like. I appreciate it very much and let's get started. So originally this netbook came with Windows XP and it was working fine in 2009 and a few years later, but eventually the apps got heavier and heavier and it couldn't just handle anything. I have upgraded this netbook with two gigabytes of RAM instead of one gigabyte. So for the RAM side, it's still pretty good. It's not absolutely hopeless. So I decided to see if I can change the operating system for a lighter weight Linux distribution from MX Linux, which like I said, is still supporting 32 bit operating systems and releases updates regularly. So let's go ahead and try it out. If you want to know how to install MX Linux, how to download it, how to create a bootable USB drive, I'm going to put a link in the description. You can check it out. In this video, I'm not going to focus on the full tutorial how to install it. We're going to simply try out MX Linux on this very ancient machine. But if you want to do it for the older machines, you need to choose this MX Linux 386, which contains a 32-bit kernel. Don't try the 64-bit because it will not work. After that, flash it onto the USB drive and start the installation process. Then go ahead and start the computer. To start from the USB drive, we're gonna need to go to the BIOS settings. And then after that, to set up the USB drive into the first booting positions. After that, press F10 and press OK. Now it will reboot and it should start booting from the USB drive. And yeah, check this out. So we got MX Linux splash screen. And here we're gonna choose MX-23.6. 386 and then press enter it will start loading linux kernel there we go so this is mx linux live boot environment it is not yet installed on the computer we're going to go ahead and install it so that it will permanently run on this computer so as you can see the cpu usage is jumping over here the memory usage is 37 percent so still quite a bit of memory used. So it feels pretty responsive, but keep in mind it's running from the USB stick. It's not running, it's not running from the internal drive. And you can see that all the drivers have been recognized. So it recognizes the battery, it recognizes the USB mouth, it recognizes Bluetooth. Well, let's go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi. See what we got for available networks. This one only supports 2.4 gigahertz, so it's quite slow. There we go. The connection has been established. Very good. So let's go ahead and click on this installer and follow through the installation prompts. The installation on this netbook will probably be a little bit longer than on a regular PC, but I'm fine with that. Let's be patient and do that. Quickly go through all the prompts. Choose the keyboard layout. I'll stick with English. I'm going to be using regular install using the entire disk. If you want to customize it, you can choose this option here. Customize the disk layout. But because I don't need anything on this computer, I'm going to use install using the entire disk. But this option, you got to be careful because it will remove everything from the disk. If you need anything, go back and copy everything you need. And after that, continue on. So let's just go click next. As you can see, it will say format and use their entire disk. This action cannot be undone. Do you want to continue? All right, well, let's do that. Meanwhile, we can call the computer name. 
everything else we're just gonna leave and then press next then we can choose the locale time format you can change that afterwards login name enter the password you can select to auto login and then press next now we're going to wait until it's going to copy and then we're going to continue when it's all done as you can see it is it will take from 3 to 20 minutes depending on the speed of your system and the size of any partitions you're formatting all right so the installation is complete let's go ahead and reboot it all right there we go so make sure when you reboot you remove the usb drive and also go back to the bias settings and select the boot device to the internal drive and not to the usb drive because if you select to the usb drive it will start booting again from the usb drive which we don't want but anyway as you can see we got the libretto let's go ahead and time it and see how long it will take to boot so i'm gonna put the timer here and we're gonna start booting mx linux And yeah you can go grab a coffee so it does take quite a long time but at least it's working maybe because it's the first boot i'm not sure but that's just taking way too long <laughs> one and a half minute already Whew. it is loaded but it's still not 100 percent loaded it's still not working so we got one minute 45 seconds and it's still still loading wow oh the mouse start working there we go well i'm actually surprised windows was way faster it loaded like in 30 seconds wow well let's call it done so two minute 15 seconds and we have pretty much everything's working but actually not quite it's still loading oh wow Ooh, that's a pain it's like three minutes three minutes to load and check the cpu usage 99 percent memory usage 37 percent so similar to what we had before with windows hdd or it's actually an ssd oh now we got the cpu usage to one two percent perfect so we have 46 updates available let's view them see what we got cpu indicator right on the desktop so you see what's happening so what we got full upgrade linux headers LibreOffice, phones we'll do that later so as you can see right out of the box we got the battery level working so the drivers for the battery working we got the Bluetooth working. We got updates here. Wi-Fi is working, sound is working, microphone is working. Then let's go to this file manager, see how it works. Yeah, there we go. So the file manager is working as well. You can go check out, there's videos. Well, I don't have anything on this computer because we have just installed this operating system let's go ahead and check out youtube how it's going to be working i can see the cpu usage is just going crazy okay well at least it started go to youtube it can play videos but it's not super quick to subscribe and if you like this video hit the like button and press that notification bell so you don't miss any videos all right let's start so the first thing you got to do is you got to go to the right bottom corner to where the keyboard is then press the left click go to keyboard so this is a 360 resolution if you decide to play anything more like 720 let's say at least like hd ready oh there you go so you can see the what's on the screen it's still playing actually things you can do with the keyboard but the one we need is a switch into another layout so press here open this menu and here's a few different combination of keyboards you can use to get it switched. I prefer using the L shift. Yeah, the CPU is still 100%. Well, everything else is working, so that's good. Let's try out some 
multimedia player here there is office let's try out office see how it's gonna work so yeah it definitely feels outdated it's still working like you can use it for some day-to-day -day tasks but but if you don't want to be waiting for more than you're working i think this is just that's it you know like this little netbook is just not able to work anymore and for example you can do some things you can work with it but it's just not doing that great of a job anymore like like yeah you can work with documents it can handle them pretty well even though on such a small screen it is very difficult to work because you don't get too much on the screen though it works pretty smooth here like it's not the best but everything is working but if you just don't want to throw it out and you just want to keep it and give it a second life well i think this is a nice free operating system that you can install and it has a lot of interesting features you can try you can learn it you know and you can still keep using this laptop if you really want to so yeah like but like i said you know it this processor is just so weak that it barely handles anything but you know what it's still working everything's working so you can as you can see the display is working the wi-fi is working bluetooth working so everything you need is there well there you have it guys i did the best we can you know uh, try the lightest operating system from linux and it still barely handles it so it's still running like the CPU usage on average. If it's idling, it's okay because it's using about 5%. But as soon as you start running some heavier apps, especially YouTube or any other browser with video, it will just throttle the CPU to 100% and it will just stop being usable. There is another distro you can try, which is Lubuntu. I also have a video how to install Lubuntu on this exact netbook. So the display drivers, the CPU support, the Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LAN, everything is working right out of the box. So even the Bluetooth is working fine. It's still functional, but what can I say? Can you use it? Yes, you can. So is it better than using Windows? Yes, I think it's better because you're still getting updates on this MX Linux 32-bit operating system. And even watching videos is a bit smoother. It is not perfect, but it is smoother than running it on Windows because like you saw, running it on Windows would just give you slideshow and even the sound would break constantly, like you cannot even hear. On MX Linux, at least you can hear it and the slideshow is a bit less. So... Yeah, there's a bit of improvement, but honestly, on such ancient hardware, you cannot do much and you cannot expect much from this old hardware because it is already getting too much outdated and the newer apps, they just become so heavier. So no matter how you optimize it, they're just not designed to run on this older hardware. Let me know what old computer you have and if you plan to revive it, how you're going to do it. Are you going to install Ubuntu or MX Linux like we just did? That'd be interesting to know. But this is it for today. I hope you find this video helpful. If you like it, please support with the like. Also, if you're first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. And if you'd like to support my channel, you can use the super thanks button under the video or just buy me a coffee. All right, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.